Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University. And I brought a chillmonger. Ni hao. <laughs> In Chinese, oh, ni hao. <laughs> she, she, and that's the extent of my Chinese. I don't know anything else. <laughs> so, what's going on, dude? You know, man, just ready to talk about Brie Larson and her YouTube channel. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, the, it's of the utmost importance. Absolutely. It's like the <laughs> most important thing out there. I'm sure that there were people, there were sensitive snowflakes exploding like hellfire. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't play. Just picking her apart. I, I watched like maybe the first couple of minutes of one of her videos. I'll probably go back and watch the rest of it. But realistically, like she just comes on with so much energy, which is refreshing because it's genuine energy and she's just talking and she's like, she's getting excited over her switch and somebody else's cover for a switch. And she's talking to people. I think that the thing that I disliked about it most was that Superwoman, the, the sing girl. She just, she just Lily looked, sings. That's Lily Superwoman. sing. Yeah. Superwoman. She's just, what is that? Is that something that she does? Yeah. It's an S when you take your index fingers and match them, you take your uh, middle fingers and match them. Unmatch oh, them, sorry. Hey, look at that. that. S. So that's something that she does? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty creative. Anyway. You know she's um, from here, right? Yeah, she's you... from Toronto area. Yeah, and she always does the uh, the Jamaican accent because that's apparently the uh, the slang in uh, Toronto, which I've never in my life heard. No, that, that's a thing. Okay, but I've never heard anybody use that slang, at, like in the Comic Cons or just on the streets or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know saying? Like, we're, we're both not too far from freaking Toronto. I've never heard... Anybody in general using that before, whatever. It just seems an awful lot like some culture appropriation to me. Oh, but anyway, I just don't like her. I don't like her. I don't think that she's very creative at all. It is what it is. And even then, she's just like, oh, yeah, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, that's freaking Brie Larson. Be nice. She contacted you. Be nice. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, yeah, well, hold on a minute now. Go I don't on. want to hear that's Brie Larson. They're on YouTube. They're in her home territory. This isn't a Brie Larson establishment. You know, I, I was actually impressed when I clicked on that <laughs> Brie Larson video, the 20 minute one, there was uh -huh. already an ad there. So she met the requirements of all uh, the watch time and the subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if, if, if these big people are going to start jumping on freaking YouTube, you and I mm -hmm. aren't going to have a platform left. This was supposed to be for little people. I think there's always going to be a desire for honest opinions. At least mm -hmm. for me, I'll put in the search bar, let's say, um, I don't know, Empire issue number one review. Yeah, uh, I don't care how big you are. If you didn't do an Empire number one review, I'm not going to see your video. I'll see your video and the Caped Joels and Fortress of Solitude and all those guys who actually do reviews. So I got to check out Fortress of Solitude. I keep on seeing him and I'm just I just don't take the time to. That's on me. I just don't yeah. take the time to check him out. He's good, though. Yeah, he just talks over the comic books. I don't think he ever puts his face on unless he's doing a podcast like we do it here. But he's he doesn't just, have a face. He doesn't yeah. have a face. He's faceless. Oh, no, nah, man. I don't like the, the faceless people, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I trust somebody who can't see their face. You can't mm -hmm. see the nervous ticks and whatnot. They're trying to sneak up on you, do something shady. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've done some of those videos myself, and I'm actually thinking about going towards that more than uh, it, it'll take more work because you actually got to edit. Mm. But, like, why not? Mm. I'll try it like, if it gets we me don't more like subscribers. Editing. If, oh, editing is the worst. I, I think I I know I began videos on YouTube, putting the pictures and, you know, phasing from one image to another, talking over it, re-recording if I didn't like the way my voice sounded. And I'm like, why did it take me eight hours to do a three minute video? Yeah. That, was probably, that was early, though. It wouldn't take me eight hours to do a three minute video now. But still, <laughs> I got better at talking and I could speak uninterrupted for the most part. And I, I now I do like 10 minutes without editing and I'll have the book in my hand. But I think there's yeah. more value in pictures because like what do you when you're looking at a image of me you're just looking at me talking my face is not much interesting my lips move that's it but if you're looking at the images on the comic book you know the storytelling is being done more better I show the images on my comic book mm -hmm. and then I just let my face <laughs> do the rest ah, is You show the is, preview man. images you have some yeah. sort of integrity you don't want to spoil it or anything I'm just like well, yeah. I bought this thing I own it I will <laughs> show you it here's how think, it ends <laughs> do you think that there are more people who watch your videos who haven't read the comic book or who have read the comic book and want to be in, in on a conversation most people 
most people I bel- from from the comments, most people read the comic books beforehand. And I and I, you know, politely, you know, comically chastise people. Why are you listening to this review if, uh, you know, whatever. But at the same time, I also say, hey, listen, there's not going to be too many spoilers in this. So whatever. And then if I am going to spoil, I'll, I'll very pointedly say so. First, I'm going to do this. First, I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about who made the book. Then I'm going to talk about the book itself. Then I'm going to get into spoiler yeah. territory, but I'm going to warn you before I do it. So I always, you know, do it like that. So this way there's there's no surprise. You get the gist. And then I'll remind you again. Now I'm going to get into spoiler territory. So if you haven't read this comic book, piss off. <laughs> and I always start with, hey, this is the comic book. And I liked it or I didn't like this too much. This way, if, if you didn't read the comic book, you'd be like, oh, Professor Bill's opinion is he liked it or didn't like it. Boop, I'm out. So, yeah. You, you know what comic that. you're not going to be doing that for? The Storm Ranger tie-in for Empire, the Spider-Man tie-in for Empires, Invasion of Wakanda of Empire. Oh for some God. reason, those books are not coming out in paper form, at least. They still might do that digital thing exclusively on digital. Uh, yeah, they probably will. They should. If the comic books were produced, like you got people to work on it, then damn, they didn't work on that for nothing. Well, they got paid for it. They would have still gotten paid for it. But don't you also want your stuff out there, though? If like you're really proud of your work and you wanted people to see your artwork, your well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I um, uh, what do you call it? It was just today on my podcast that I announced because I just saw it that I was in this uh, Top Cow um, art or not art contest. There, there was the Top Cow contest where you make a comic book. I saw. If you, yeah, if you're an artist, you can you do eight pages. Uh, you know, of just whatever, drawing the darkness character. And if you're a writer, then you write 20 pages, exactly 20 pages of a comic book. And there is one winner for each and then one runner up for each. They're the art and the writing respectively. So I, you know, went in and I didn't win. They're not going to say who's third place in each category or anything like that. They, they're just, no, nothing. It's like, thanks. Bye. So I was not one of the, I was not the winner or the runner up for the writing section, whatever. One of the guys who won is a, a, um, a professional screenwriter. It's like, how am I going to beat a freaking professional screenwriter? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah, I didn't win. And it's like, it is what it is, but that's the very first comic book I ever actually wrote as a comic book. And yeah, um, it's not easy. And if I wrote a comic book and it's like, hey, I got paid for it, everything, but you're not going to put it out there, but that's going to get me other jobs. Yeah, I'd be really upset. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. That that that, that would kind of suck. So my thought is put it out as a digital bundle. You know what I'm saying? And maybe even consider putting it out in a physical trade paperback with everything in there. Like, you know, if you buy the regular stuff and then also if you get the, the Empire – um, extended omnibus type. yeah the omnibus uh-huh. it's like all of a sudden there's the director's edition where you got all those other 19 books that were just sucked right out of it as it stands there's still going to be 21 titles <laughs> that are just tie-ins alone that just shows you how useless these were going to be they're just exactly. doing them for the sake of money exactly so they pulled them they pulled these 19 tie-ins wow. because the uh the covid 19 thing like yeah people are poor now so I don't think that they're going to sell. So why would we bother printing and put them out there? So let's not do that. But man, they're still going to be putting. So there's going to be the the five. Was it five or six main issues? There's the. There's two there's, zero issues and six main yeah. empires. Yeah, there's the there's those and then six main books. Yeah, there we go. And then there's going to be the aftermath and the fallout. The aftermath will be Avengers. And the fallout will be Fantastic Four. Oh, because so, it starts with the letter A, starts with the letter F. That's that's uh, that's actually really genius. I'm not gonna lie, that's really slick. <laughs> it's creative. It's creative. There's no doubt. But yeah, 19 freaking tie-ins just boop by. Three of them are Thor. Two of them are Squadron Supreme. Like, dude, you you, you like that's the adventure storyline. You know, what yeah, saying who, with Coulson and all that stuff. But was Jason Aaron writing it? That's what matters. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't care. Obviously, it wasn't that important, right? I, I think it matters if Jason Aaron is writing it or not. Yeah, yeah you don't put someone, <laughs> you don't put someone on a book if it means nothing. Someone important like that, you wouldn't. You decide put him to on. bring those characters in. Like, is it important? Is it not important? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't. Like I said, I don't really care because I'm not a fan of what Jason Aaron is doing right now. Anyway, in general. You don't um, think he's concluding stories, eh? Nah, I don't think he's concluding stories. I think some of the stories are just so outlandish. 
you know, like beating up Thor with Moon Knight. I, I, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I loves me some Moon Knight, but Moon Knight ain't beating up Thor. I don't care if it's on that special day of the year or the special day of whatever. It's that once in a blue moon thing. That was just so annoying. I could not believe what I was reading when I was seeing that stuff. But anyway, whatever, man. There's an interview with Scott Amos. He It was done by Lad Bible. And this guy does Avengers, the video game. And he was asked whether or not... And I'll get, this is getting back to the tie-ins. But he asked what? him, will Spider-Man's video game and Avengers video game be in the same universe? He said no. Knowing that, I look at the comic books and you can see the Gamerverse little thing on the side as if they're in the same universe, right? If one's called the Gamerverse and the other one's called the Gamerverse, that means like they're both, right? Earth 613. <laughs> but no, that they're just different things. Is and it nomenclature Earth 613? I made that up. But oh, whatever made the nomenclature up. is, it should be the same because they both have yeah. Gamerverse on the side. Yeah. It, it turns out that the creative team behind that video game isn't communicating with the creative team um, in New York City. So yeah. what's the point? Yeah. So now you're going to have a nomenclature for Spider-Man, a nomenclature for the Avengers. Yeah. Will there be a different nomenclature for Miles Morales? Maybe, maybe not. It should be the uh, Spider-Man one. But either way, now you're going to have a mo- nomenclature for the uh, Gamerverse uh, comic book. You know what I'm saying? So like all of it, they're all going to have to be different now because these no. are all supposed to be in the same. Unless, well, I agree with you for the most part. Yeah, we can't put any trust on it in anything, but... There is a chance that the Miles game will will follow up on the story from the original game. And there is a chance that the next video game that comes out from Marvel Spider-Man will address the Spider-Get-In tie-in that he just had with everybody. It could. So maybe the Spider-Man guys will all be in one little Gamerverse. Mm-hmm. But they're not in the same Gamerverse as or universe as the Avengers. So what's the point? But yeah. it, it shows you like when you put somebody on a book who's not Jason Aaron or Jonathan Hickman or someone like, you know, big. And what's the point of even reading it? Like, it's useless. To me, that's the way I see it. And I've been proven correct so many times. Well, Zub is on the Gamerverse Yeah, books. it's crazy. Jim Zub is supposed to be like, I don't know. He's not, he's not, right? Jason Aaron, but he's still somebody, isn't he? He's been with them for like 10 years, five so. years. Has he been with them for that long? He did Uncanny Avengers. So that's 2014. That wasn't that long ago. It wasn't well, that long ago. The Unity Squad happened after AVX in 2012. Yeah, the Unity Squad. Wait, isn't the you Uncanny know, I, Avengers one? I don't they... know. You know what? Maybe. I, I don't think it was that long, though, that he Maybe. was uh, okay, doing Let's that. give him five years, then? Let's say five years. Something like that, possibly. Thunderbolts. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, either way, I don't know, man. This whole thing. There's, there's just too much nonsense in there. Too much separation of whatever. So, psh- who cares? <laughs> you wanna, Who cares speaking of nonsense, Brian Singer's nonsense has been brought to your attention. Now, I've been knowing about the shenanigans that this guy was all about or mm. the alle- alleged shenanigans. Honestly, I don't know because I'm not there, but I'm pretty sure that you can't be caught in that many pictures without me knowing you're up to no good. So, yeah, that, yeah that's Brian I, Singer. Yeah, I genuinely had no idea. All of a sudden, he starts uh, trending on Twitter, lock up Brian Singer. I'm like, wait, really? Like, I, I, I know I personally wasn't a fan of his X-Men movies, mm-hmm. like, at all, or the Superman movie that he did, Superman Returns. But, like, to lock him up for that? Like, it, it, is that a crime nowadays? And then I realized, like, he's in there for uh, uh, apparently, allegedly, operating a child sex ring for 20 years or so. And uh, he's got all these pics with young boys. And it's like, what the and heck And, you know, he going beat on? a case a few years ago. But still, like, people knew. When what's his name? Rami Malik won his Oscar for yeah. for Freddie Mercury. Okay. He didn't thank the director, and that was that was Brian Singer. That might be reading into it too much. I don't know, but yeah, that's think, think about that. You're winning a reward for best actor, and you're not going to thank your director. That's not reading into it. I know. Well, I don't know how many other people haven't thanked the director. Everybody? You know, Ray Fisher technically thanked. The director mm-hmm. once <laughs> can we lead into that yeah <laughs> i figured it's a perfect segue I, i'm honestly like how come chill doesn't say this is the perfect freaking tie-in <laughs> but uh so here's here's something wild man mm-hmm. ray fisher uh what is this now he 
back That's in Cyborg from the Justice League movie. Yeah, sorry. That is Cyborg from the Justice League movie. We were just talking about him not too long ago in a, in a couple of podcasts ago. Anyway, so Cyborg goes and he's uh, Ray Fisher uh, back in 2017. I'm doing this from memory now because I, I have too many notes and they're all over the place. He he sat down in a panel with all the other actors like Gail Gadot was on his right and uh, Jason Momoa was on his left. And somebody asked the question of him, you know, what was it like working with um, – What's his name? Joss Whedon. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's uh, he's a good guy. He's a stand up guy. And I don't think Zach could have picked anybody better to, you know, pick up or to clean up his uh, his his his. How did he say mess? But he said clean up and and, you know, clean up after him and then, you know, like put the stuff together, after you know, in his absence. So, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. And Jason Momoa didn't like look at anybody. They were only showing Ray Fisher and Momoa. And Momoa was like he was just, like he he had a weird look on his face and he, but he nodded, you know, and he moved his eyes like, meh, like that. It didn't seem like there wasn't anything for me to read into. Now I'm all of a sudden reading into this stuff because I'm, because Ray Fisher goes and he turns around and he starts talking about, uh, Joss Whedon in his tweets. He says is gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable behavior. Um, he enabled, uh, in many, he was enabled in many ways by Jeff Johns, and John Berg, the two uh, executive producers on this. Uh, he, uh, and then he, he finishes off by saying accountability is greater than entertainment. So John Berg responds by saying this is categorically untrue that we enabled any professional behavior. Also, I remember ups, uh, Fisher being upset that we wanted him to say booyah, which is a well-known saying of cyborgs in the animated series, which... It's true. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. It was one of the few things I liked about the Justice League movie. Like he said, booyah, uh, towards the, in, in the Ray Fisher cyborg thing was just like, booyah. It's like, man, you're supposed to be a cyborg, not a robot, <laughs> but whatever. It's like, at least I was like, okay, there's fan acknowledgement. Yay. <laughs> you know, whatever, dude, <laughs> what do you think about all this? I have a strong no opinion on all of it. It's just people fighting each, with each other. He called them abusive. He called them restricting and all that. But like, get into the details, or, 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 or I don't care. Like, let, let me know exactly what you guys are talking about. What did Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns conspire against you? Because you're Ray Fisher, or excuse me, you were Cyborg. Um, you were like the least important member of the Justice League. And yeah. like, how much could? But you really according, want? but we also said that uh, in a recent tweet. Mm -hmm. um, Zack Snyder went and said, you were the heart of my movie. Okay. Um, you remember that? So was he least important because he was pulled out of the movie? That's the thing. Like this, this is a really weird in, thing. The word heart can be interpreted in many ways. It doesn't yeah. mean you were the most important person in the movie. It could mean that you had, like, yeah, it can mean anything. So I don't know what to put any stock he into that. He is word. supposed to be a tragic character. If you know the history of Cyborg, uh, I just, pull down my, uh, my all my stuff up here so I can clean but I have my cyborg figure right up here before anyway and I just looked into one of my spotlights and now I can't see so he's a football player and his dad is a scientist yes and um... and he was hit by a boom tube accident and it caused mo uh, a good portion of his body to be just like strewn away including portions of his brain so his father actually used mother box technology on him in order to keep him alive but now as a cyborg yeah now i saw the animated movie that explained that was that always his origin with the boom yes. tube and stuff uh with the boom tube i'm not sure because i really only got heavily into cyborg's origin with the new 52 it was one of the only new 52 books that i actually liked was the cyborg uh story uh but before that he, he still had a very similar origin whether it was the boom tube or not mm-hmm like if you go back to like Judas Contract and some other Teen Titans and new Teen Titans and stuff like that. Okay, then let me just give DC their credit now because when I watched that animated film and you told me, you're telling me now that it's exactly like the comic, that's like mm -hmm. the third time that's happened. Like the Flashpoint movie where you got uh, Aquaman versus Wonder Woman and stuff like that and Batman's father and all that. Apparently that's exactly how the comics went also. Yeah. So shout out to them for being accurate in their animated films. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's one of the reasons why you will nary ever find someone who will say anything other than 
the movies are controversial and you know only a select number of people like them but Mm -hmm. everybody agrees that they do their animated movies better than pretty much anybody else out there better than marvel does you know uh almost everybody agrees that dc kills it with their animated line they're gonna be saying marvel does web series better than anyone else when disney plus comes out because apparently it appears that there will be more than six episodes of the WandaVision television show, and maybe even Falcon and Winter Soldier, because of the way they were talking about it. Yeah, so there was, uh, I don't know, a janitor or somebody, there's somebody who went and, you know, released, oh, hey, uh, I just had issue, or episode 109 of whatever, WandaVision. It's like, how is it 109? Wouldn't it be up to, from 101 to 106? Why would they do a 9? So that's interesting. Yeah. Lost that's, years. Hey, they, they, and they even said WandaVision was done filming early. They didn't have to go back after the pandemic happened. It's only Falcon and Winter Soldier where they had to, I think they had nine more days left to shoot. Well, they, they're going to go down to Atlanta pretty soon to start filming some stuff. Uh, okay. Apparently because it's really hard to get overseas. It's funny, man. America, the the land of... You know, don't come into our country. Now everybody's saying, yeah, Americans don't come into our country. Not until you get your COVID stuff cleaned up. <laughs> like, that's the world right now. Yeah, we're doing pretty good in Ontario, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah, we just got moved to the next level. Uh, that's not, I don't, I don't look at uh, that we, as my uh, as my per- parameter of where we are. I'm looking at the numbers. Every day I Google COVID-19 and I'll be like, okay, Ontario has... 130 new cases. We used to be up at the 600 territory and we're getting mm. lower. I don't care yep. what stage we're at. <laughs> <laughs> were we done talking about um, animated yeah, stuff? Yeah, it was a very small thing. It was, it was like nothing there. <laughs> when do you think Falcon and Winter Soldier will come out? Uh, when did they say it was supposed to come out? Uh, December? Fall. No, oh, WandaVision fall. is December. Okay. So yeah, fall, fall of this year. So before Mandalorian, eh? Yeah. Uh, to go back to the um, the Ray Fisher stuff, mm-hmm. uh, Kevin Smith from the Fat Man Beyond podcast just said that uh, amongst other things, amongst other things, he's got third hand information from some of the VFX artists on the set of Solo that uh, Wheaton would cut down, uh, he would cut. He would down, he would dismiss, and be negative about Zach's version of the movie. Um, wow. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm here to do my movie, and I'm, well, I don't care about some other guy's movie. I'm not here to do some other guy's movie. I'm here to do my movie. Yeah, but that's like walking in and talking to some lower people about And mind you, a lot of these people at the VX, uh, the, yeah, the, the special effects, worked on that movie also. Oh, so it's their movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, dude, way to read the room, right? I don't know if Whedon is just having a, a, a midlife crisis or something like that, because he was always considered this big time feminist guy, you know? And then his wife, um, his wife is uh, Kai Cole. She she got mad at him when he, he was leaving her and it's like, oh, he cheated. So some feminist. It's like, wait a second. Cheating on somebody doesn't mean that you're not a feminist. Like that's. That was never one of the tenets of being a feminist. You know what I'm saying? That just means that you're a fairly immoral person and you don't understand or care about the tenets of marriage. But that's uh-huh. not about feminism. Yeah, I, I can see where she made the connection, but it's not feminism. I, I, no, that's like one of those newfangled, that's like those modern uh, feminists, like people who call themselves feminists, even though they're not actually a part of the movement. Like I know actual I don't know if they're card carrying. I should ask if they're card carrying. But I know people who are actually a part of the feminist movement. They used to be the suffragettes, you know, back in the day. Uh, I know a lot of them. And like, you know, they're not they don't have this toxic attitude like a lot of claimed feminists have today. You know, I don't know if some of these people are feminists or not, but like that's never what the movement was about, you know. Um, so this is just somebody who's, you know, who hears the word feminist and think it means support women no matter what. And that's not what a feminist is. I think that's what Kelly Sue DeConnick thinks that's what it means because of that video that she did. Also. She's yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm on the team no matter what. But for clarification, what does feminist mean? Well, feminist is simply supposed to uh, the, the idea of feminism started so that women could actually be allowed to vote. 
And the way that it worked, the whole series behind it is actually really impressive. Uh, they would, um, it was usually the women who were married to these men of power, these, these men who voted and things like that. And they'd, you know, go in and start peeling their potatoes or slicing their carrots or sewing whatever on the other side of the, uh, of the door, like in the kitchen side, um, while while the men were talking because the the women are supposed to leave once politics come up because women aren't suited for politics you know back in the day right so they would sit in the other end and they would listen to all this stuff and then the women would confer with each other and like okay so here's who's going to vote like this here's who's going to vote like that here's who's likely to side with our cause here's who's not here's uh here's one of the issues that they're really interested in here's one of the issues that they have no interest in whatever and they would basically compile all these notes like they would have it in this guy's house then another day this guy's house another night that guy's house so they would compile all these notes and they would decide how they were going to talk to their husbands to get them to do this and then a bunch of other women would join in also and they were actually able to get the right to vote and they and and they just basically fight for rights to become equal with men so these were women in washington dc no it didn't have to be washington dc uh you could be like a senator uh of you know new jersey like where i'm from you know, saying they would always have to uh, once a month or so, they'd have to ride into um, uh, would into D.C., you know, for a couple of days to do their voting and then they'd come back home. So they were all over the country and they would just confer with each other, you know. Over the telephone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So interesting. But anyway, um, it was never this toxic form where everything is, you know, b- like believe the women no matter what no that's that's not a part of feminism that's not what that is it's you know believe the woman enough to have an investigation not to just accuse and don't believe the guy anyway so it's nonsense like that and here's some more nonsense this is just fisher being ray fisher being petty he has a new tweet that just came out i think today Mm. where he says i believe kai cole and charisma carpenter well I don't know what you're believing Kai Cole about because she said that he cheated and they got a divorce and he didn't deny it. So you're also believing him. I don't (laughs) see what the like that. That's just about as petty as petty gets. The Chris McCarpenter thing is actually when she was she was on uh, Buffy and then she moved over to the Angel TV series. And then rumor is that she got pregnant and then he booted her off the show, which I don't know how I feel about that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're compromising the schedule period of the TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm. I, I'm. I think the answer. The answer is the way like you just worded it. I don't know how I feel about that because I'm the same way. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like you should have the right to. You should have the ability, which you do, to you know have a kid and everything. That's part of the nature of life. But if you agreed that you would be able to play this role for a certain amount of years, a certain amount, then like honor that agreement or yeah, don't agree you, to it at all. Yeah. You know what your off time is. And it depends on how mm-hmm. long you're like, if you got a freaking five year, 10 year contract, whatever, like with something crazy like that, eh, you know, but I mean, something like, like it's planning a family and that's what's supposed to be it's supposed to be family planning, not oops. You know what I'm saying? So like accidents okay. can happen or whatever, but, but then keep that same energy for Becky Lynch. Well, see, that's the thing, because this is what I was going to bring up was the Becky Lynch thing. Jim Cornette got attacked and hit hard for this. You know what I'm saying? And again, I still don't know how I feel about this. You know, they've got their own decisions to make, but she did have a contract, you know. But I can look at the Becky Lynch situation as she works for the WWE. There's no off season. There's no time where they're going to be over. So she can do the rest of the contract some other time. But for a TV show, they're going to go six seasons and that's it. But the WWE will never stop. And also Jim Cornette is Jim Cornette. So when he's complaining about it, we know it's coming from a dark place. Mm. So did you hear Jim Cornette's opinion on it? I think I did at the time. And he's just, he was down on her for getting pregnant. And I, okay, sure. You're anti-women, yeah. Jim Cornette. Or you're anti-damn near everything that's good. I don't think he's anti-women. Look, I don't agree with him on everything as far as the um, the WWE or, or even AEW is concerned. Like, he doesn't like Orange Cassidy. I love Orange Cassidy. I think that he's one of the best freaking wrestlers out there. I, I don't like when the old-timers in wrestling act like the secret's not out of the bag. We know wrestling's fake. 
So it's okay for people to do like the social distancing match that Joey Janela did where no one was touching each other. They were kind of miming a uh, 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 collar and elbow tie up and everything, whipping each other, using the force to choke slam each other. Like that was fun <laughs> to see. We know wrestling's fake. So like, why are you complaining about it? Yeah. Scripted yeah. man. Scripted. Uh, all right. No, fake, fake. It's, fake fighting. <laughs> it's completely fake fighting. Fake fighting. Okay, fine. But anyway, um, what do you call it? tell that to mankind you bastard <laughs> i think that um no i don't see that's the thing i don't think that just because you you have a certain opinion on something that it right away makes you anti something like that just that these extremist sort of cancel culture nonsensical views are just so beyond the pale for me maybe so he said something that jim, i didn't hear i'm using jim Cornette's history of a person and, uh, and his take on everything as my, uh, my he is a very negative guy he is a very old school guy again maybe you heard him say something yeah. that i didn't hear i don't yeah. know that's, that's um, what happened that's exactly what happened because you should be on my side if you had all the information i had and the really? history of just watching and listening to this guy talk hmm. yeah i only started listening to his podcast and stuff like that recently uh maybe in the past couple of months and i don't listen to it religiously i'll listen to the uh the clips if i see one of his clips on youtube that's like oh i want to know what he's got to say about this i'll check it out um, I was that way about Tucker Carlson. I'm like, oh, this guy's not so bad. He's he's mm, a Sagar wow. in Je- in um freaking mentor. mentor. Yeah. I'm like, all right, this. And then I listen, and I'm like, aha, you racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's a white supremacist. There is no doubt that Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist, which is what kills me. That Sagar and Jetty. I don't even know that you listened to the View. To the, uh, hill. the View, the Hill, the Hill. I think you put me on the them because you told me about a girl named Crystal Ball. Yes. And I watched one of their videos just because it was on. And then I'm like, oh, that's the crystal ball guy, girl, that yeah. Professor Bill was talking about. And then I look at you misgendering her. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, was, no, it's good. I was going to say something. I was going to say something important. What were you going to say? Um, I was just saying in general, I, I don't necessarily disagree with his opinion, but I don't necessarily agree with it either. I just look at it as if you had a contract to do something and mind you, I'm saying this knowing that WWE is a garbage company and <laughs> you that have to say that every week I have to, I have to, you know, um, one day I'm going to become like the best wrestler in the world. And then someone's going to like Sammy Guevara me and look back at this podcast and all the times that you're saying WWE is a garbage company, and then like you know, it's contract negotiation time, and they're like, "Wait a minute, chillmonger." <laughs> uh, I'll I'll be happy to to recant. Just no, just no, I don't live in a your... fake alternate reality. No, universe. whatever. What, they're a garbage once, company. Once you, you get you your oh wow, okay, there you go. No. <laughs> Sammy Guevara. Look what is... happened to Ric Flair? How the hell do you not do COVID testings? And Ric Flair is is all of a sudden showing up. All they did was they've been doing temperature tests. AEW is actually doing regular old, um, you know, COVID tests each because time. Because they don't run a sloppy shop. Yeah, yeah. And Vince McMahon is all about those sloppy seconds. Oh. So he's just doing temper like with a thermometer. He's doing. I, I'm surprised. You know, I'm surprised he didn't just do it rectally. But like, take it like a champ, pal. <laughs> But, oh, oh, I got to do it. You know what? Let's do my Vince McMahon voice this time. All He's right. literally like, all right, guys, we're just going to do temperature tests. All right. If you got a fever, well, then you could socially distance when you're wrestling a little bit or you'll just do a promo or something. All right, pal. But either way, Bruce, Bruce picture. Come over here and agree with me. All right. Be my be my yes man, Toadie, so that it, it sounds like I got a cheering squad. All right, boss. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, wait. No, that was more. um I love you. There we go. That's Bruce Pritchard. Uh, brother love. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, whoa, 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 what are you doing over there? You have a mask? We don't do masks here in the WWE. We're men. All right. Even the women were men. All right. We don't do masks here. Like he doesn't do masks. He doesn't do any of that nonsense. And then what happens? Ric Flair comes in. Hey, baby, I'm styling and profiling. And he's freaking 300 years old. And, and they just had 19 people go down with COVID, people freaking out all over the place over COVID. And then they and we know that this affects old people. And all of a sudden they freaking trussle uh, Ric Flair out there to start having a conversation at the top of the ramp. It's like, what what are you doing bringing Ric Flair in the middle of COVID central? What are you doing? Oy. <laughs> <laughs> Rant. <laughs> you know, that's, that's valid. I was going to uh, slip in there that Kane really needed to unmask he really did not like that mask because uh, apparently he what did he vote in knoxville county knoxville county where he is the mayor that's glenn mayor glenn jacobs of knoxville county tennessee 
I think the vote was seven to one or 19 to one. I forget what it is, but uh, I think it was seven to one. And he was the one dissenting vote. Everybody's like, we should start making masks mandatory just to try and bring down the curve. Right. And he was the one dissenting vote who said, yeah, no, I don't like masks. Meanwhile, he was Kane. No, but he <laughs> the, unmasked. He didn't like he, he really didn't like the masks. Yeah, but here's the question. Was Rob Van Dam right over there for him to choke slam? <laughs> I mean, like after he unmasked? I, I don't understand. Uh, that's, that's very valid. Right? We got to go up to Battle Creek, Michigan to get his opinion on this. There you go. He's just probably going to be like, dude, smoke weed, enjoy. <laughs> I can't do a good Rob Van Dam impression. <laughs> he, he had the best of all the hand gesture things that people would do. Rob Van Dam was better than... John Cena, because he does that. Yeah, and... yeah, dude. Rob Van Dam was one of the best promos out there, and they held him back when he was out there. And remember when there was the invasion angle, and Stone Cold didn't trust him and put him under the hot lamp. Do you remember that? Yeah, that was one of the best promos of all time. I will put that. On, I'm probably on my Mount Rushmore of promos. I'm not joking when I say when, or it wasn't even a promo, but just, you know, one of the skits. So not a promo, but a skit that's going on my Mount Rushmore because that was freaking amazing. Stone Cold's like, are you the mall? He's like, wait a second, are you the mall? <laughs> like they're going back and forth. And like the and you could tell that most of that was ad lib. And that was just so perfect. The way he's like looking back and pointing at him like, like, I don't know if I trust you <laughs> going back and forth, dude. That guy is just one of the best. And you know he's got his routine. He's got these amazing moves. The guy's 50 years old, 54, whatever he is, still moves, you know, great, better than I can freaking move. You know, I'm not that old yet. And, uh, like, dude, Rob Van Dam should go down as one of the best wrestlers who just got held back by the WWE big time. So he won the titles in ECW and WWE. I believe he failed a drug test with Sabu that that time and that's why he lost the title so so we're going back to the whole freaking matt riddle thing it's like it's just weed <laughs> oh my god plus do you remember the one time when uh they wanted to test to see if uh people would cheer for him and he beat triple h for the title and the crap like the roof almost came off of this the, the the arena that they were in and then they're like chris jericho no, 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 no. This was Rob Van Dam. Okay. And then there was like the next day on Raw or the next week, whatever. Maybe it was the end, uh, the end of the whatever, whatever. Something happened where they're just like, oh, yeah. Triple H complained. It's like it was it was a lie. It was fake. Look, he cheated. My, my, my foot was on the rope or something like that or whatever. And it's like so they they took the title off of him. Was Earl like, Hebner the referee? <laughs> right. The, another Montreal screw job. <laughs> no, I actually meant that as a real question because I, that was... I don't remember. OK. OK. Yep. Yeah. But you can look that up. But like it was, it was a great match and everything. And that was when uh, that was one of the reasons why they brought up the Triple H shovel things. Like he's burying everybody. <laughs> yeah, the, the Ginger Mahal defeat in India from two years ago mm. is like he he's still not done burying everybody, unfortunately. Yeah. What's this about Transformers you wanted to speak on? Okay, so Transformers. Has a, well, Back to the Future is celebrating what is it? It's 25, 30 years, something like that. It's, it's celebrating some kind of an anniversary. So they decided, let's team up with the Transformers. And they made a toy. Uh, so it's basically, it's a DeLorean toy. It comes with the big extension for the, the, you know, to grab onto the lightning pole and all that stuff. And it's actually a Transformer, and they're going to call it Gigawatt. It's a funny looking one, but whatever. It is a thing. And they've got uh, – they're going to do a comic book. Uh, maybe it's a series. I, I can't remember what it is. But anyway, Transformers meets Back to the Future. So, yeah, <laughs> there's that. Right now, the um, Transformers versus Terminator is going on in IDW. So oh. a lot of cross – always crossovers with Transformers. There's probably going to be a Marvel comic of Alien versus Predator now. Uh, there's going to be plenty of them. So they it, got that when they purchased the 20th Century <laughs> Fox Studios. And they're like, oh, let's make a comic out of it. Well, Disney purchased it, yes. So then it was only, like all of us knew, it was only a matter of time. I've talked about it like two years ago when they first did the the purchase that, you know, Predator and Alien is one of those. And it's like, dude, that's actually a pretty popular comic book. They have always, always been with the, um, what, for the past 30 years, they have been with Dark Horse Comics. And now all of a sudden they are with 
Marvel. So how many incredible aliens and predator stories are we going to get? We've already got the brood, which is a, a bite off of the aliens, except the brood, oh, just, right. right? The brood, however, are actually intelligent, you know, as opposed to like the queen. None of these guys can talk. All of the brood can talk. They're all geniuses. You know what I'm saying? Brew. Like if you think that brew is smart, all of the brood are as smart as brew, you know? Um, they're all intelligent. They can all create devices and do all sorts of crazy things, you know, and whatnot with their technology. Plus they're ridiculously vicious, evil, uh, uh, race of, of, uh, you know, species of beings that just destroy an entire system, you know, bleed it dry. Uh, and now all of a sudden you're gonna have the xenomorphs who are just like, they breed even faster. And, and now imagine what happens if one of them decides to, uh, face hug the other, so to speak. Oh my God. God, what kind of creation are we going to get now? Now, I didn't think that the two universes would mix with each other, as mm -hmm. in the Marvel universe and the Aliens Predators. I'm sure Alien Predator will happen within the same universe because the movies did, so why not? Yeah. I think there'll be like a Conan thing where they've got Conan doing his yeah. thing in the Hyperborean age, the Hyborian age. Yeah, the Hyborian age, but right now, which is in Hyperborea, it's, it's, it's actually oh, so. both. Um, it's no big deal, but um, what do you call it? You, I don't know if you know the history of Conan. You know that Conan was actually an accident? Like, I just had a, a script, you know, booted. Like, I, I got my first rejection for uh, for making a comic book script. So I, I just right away thought in the back of my head, um, in my opinion, the most famous, the, the, or at least the best of these, Robert E. Howard, who wrote the Conan character, that came about because he was writing Co uh, Call the Conqueror, or Call the Atlantean. He was writing all these call stories, and one of the stories actually got rejected. So he took that story and changed it around a little bit and made Conan out of it. So it's like, holy crap. He took a rejected story and made it into an even bigger character. Mm. Like, th that's the kind of mindset that I need to have. You know what I'm saying? If I'm going to get rejected and stuff like that. So, yeah. But anyway, so... I don't know all the properties that are out there right now, all the things that they could do with that, man. I, I actually already thought of a story for, uh, and, and since I don't work for Marvel, I'm free to just give it all well, right now, if you'd like. Oh, sure. Okay. So check this out. Mm. Brew is hanging out. He's chilling out. He's with the X-Men and all this, you know, the Hickman verse and all this stuff happening on. And all of a sudden he starts getting headaches. He comes in, he's really sick. And like the crown falls off his head. King Brew. King. Right? King Brew, the crown falls off his head. And like, oh my God, hospitalize him. And, and Healer comes over and he's like, you know, well, his physiology is a little different, but hey, mutants are mutants, right? And, -doo 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 -doo, and heals him up. <coughs> he's, he's in all sorts of pain. And he starts saying, um, I'm getting these psychic screams from queens, all, you know, brew, brood queens all over the, 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 the galaxy, all over the universe. You know what I'm saying? Like they scream and then they wink out of existence. You know, because I'm in psychic connection with him now as the king of the brood. Uh, we've got to find out what's going on. So they go to, you know, and start investigating. They start seeing like all these dead and they're just like ripped to shreds and stuff like that. And um, and basically, they, you know, there's a very unfinished script. But anyway, it's, it's not a script. It's an, it's an idea. It's a plot idea. And then they come to find out, you know, oh, my God, they've, you know, they, they've been uh, experimenting with these, you know, like versions of themselves and other unknown creatures out there and they've made these things they're they're calling them xenomorphs so what's this a new creation story for the for the xenomorphs yes yes so like they actually create them kind of making them a little bit like the um starcraft the zerg yeah. <laughs> how they were created by the humans um yeah yeah anyway so they um what do you call it? They start looking and seeing all this crazy stuff. And, and it's like, you know, oh, my God. So they have to try and stop this horde because the the while the brood are ridiculously powerful and smart, these things are just unthinking, unfeeling. Even when they die, they could still kill you with their acidic blood and everything like that. And they just breed so ridiculously quickly that it's like it's terrifying. So, boom. And you don't even have to have the aliens and or the predators in there. But you could end the series where it's like, you know, these things are just out there now. And we have to be careful that these things are there. So the brood will have to actually start working together. And if anything, this could potentially stem the tide of brood attacking other solar systems now because they've got to fend off the threat of the, of the, uh, the, the xenomorphs. And then all yeah. of a sudden a predator shows up and it's like, Oh, and maybe it's the first game. person. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you played that game before it's a good game, right? Yeah. So then the predator shows up and the first person he goes after 
is Beast. Because who's the most likely to start discovering this guy and discovering that something's going on with the island? Wolverine, sure, but Wolverine's going to go out and try and look for the thing. But the but he doesn't know what the Predator is. Uh-huh. Uh, Beast, however, the Predator recognizes this as a real threat. He's got to eliminate him and maybe he kills Beast. It's okay to kill him because, you know, he'll come back. But then eventually you got to have that Wolverine and, and Predator uh, confrontation. But that's not going to work because as tough as Wolverine is, this thing's pretty damn tough too. And finally... The thing that stops this particular alien is a returning saber tooth. Because that level of beast mentality, I can't say bestiality because that's just disgusting, but that mm-hmm. beast mentality. We talked about uh, Brian that's, Singer. That's true. That's true. That's what it's going to take to actually take down this particular predator. And that's when all of a sudden these predators realize there's some real game to be had on this island. And, anyway, so and that's Taro my. Adun. Antaro Dune. There you go. The 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 Prutas. You got my life imagination. I like, oh, yeah, here I am with like the chills headcanon segment, and then we got the Professor Bill's imagination segment. <laughs> go on. So what's your uh, what's chill monger? Fourteen head? million six hundred and five. That's a long time. That's a lot of possibilities, and I can imagine that in those scenarios that Doctor Strange was living through he learned man if thanos ever throws the thing at me this is how i turn it into butterflies i can always use the mirror dimension when the black hole comes and he's doing all these things 14 million times somewhere in that 14 million times he lost and then he got woken back up and they're back in avengers headquarters fighting against a younger thanos and he's like what what is this how is this possible and then he tries to do it again, and he fails at it. And then he realizes that, and you know, he's probably like at his 10 millionth try by now. But he's like, whoa, if the battle lasts for 10 minutes and 40 seconds, this is possible. Why? It's got a whole lot to do with the rat. So basically what I'm saying is Doctor Strange needed the fight for Thanos to last as long as it lasted. Because when Thanos snapped his fingers, the rat that was uh, responsible for returning Ant-Man wasn't even born yet. But if Thanos snapped his fingers earlier, then a car would have crashed and hit the mother of that rat or something. Some sort of circumstance would have happened. To because that driver would have disappeared. Yeah. So he's um... got to wait for the battle to last however long it was, 10 minutes and something seconds before he loses and gives away the stone. That's why he gave the stone away to Thanos so slowly because he needed the timing to be just right because he needed Thanos to arrive in Wakanda at the right time when if he came too early, you know, Thor would have been there in the battlefield. But if Thor was far away taking care of those ships and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. then and Thanos appeared, he would have enough time to deal with Wanda, deal with everyone. And then Thanos would have to face Thor and Thor could have enough time to sneak up on him. Timing was important. Not that Doctor Strange knew that Thanos was fighting Thor and Wakanda or anything. He just understood, well, when the battle lasts for this amount of time, it's possible for me to return in New Jersey. That's the one possible outcome. Yeah. Okay. Anybody who's not not following along with the rat, like you're saying, the rat, you, yeah, yeah, the rat. What are you doing on this podcast? Ah, come on now. Um, R-A-T, the rat. Um... What do you call it? There was the rat that actually went and helped uh, accidentally, inadvertently got Ant-Man out of the quantum verse. So that's the rat in particular in the MCU. And I'm saying it wasn't so coincidental. It took 14,605,000 tries. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Oh, no, I'm down with that. I dig on that. That was, that was pretty good. I dig on that. And then, of course, this rat. Mm-hmm. This rat is actually the uh, grandfather of Simonson Walter. Which is, or, or excuse me, the grandfather of the rat that will go to war with the frogs and come across Simonson Walter, who will actually be Throg, the the frog of thunder. All right. Now I know Walter Simonson is a comic book writer. Did they yes. name the frog after him? Yes, they reversed the name and they named the frog after him. Yeah, nice. later on, because Thor was actually turned into a frog in uh, Walter Simonson's. Um, run on Thor, his five-year run on Thor, the greatest run on comic books ever conceived. And um, Chris Claremont. Uh, I am not alone in saying that the Thor run that uh-huh. Walter Simonson wrote is the hands-down greatest comic book run ever. Uh-huh. And I will definitely put that over top of 
uh, Chris Claremont's run on the X-Men. I will absolutely do that. Right. Um, Jonathan Hickman's like, hold my Krakoa. <laughs> Whatever, dude. He could hold it for as long as he wants. He could hold mine. Now, nah, this was this was just the best. And I have yet to see anything that's been built on as much. Like everything that uh, Jason, uh, was it Jason Aaron? Yeah. Who who's doing the? Yeah, it's Jason. Yeah, Aaron. everything that Jason Aaron did in Thor was based off of what Walter Simons has done. Yeah, nobody's nobody's done something like that before. Thor was the most boring character you you know imaginable, and he turned him into one of the most amazing characters ever. Created Beta Ray Bill on his first issue. Nah, man, this guy was amazing. When does anyway, Beta Ray Bill return? Also, he created the uh, Time Variant Authority. Oh, oh, that's gonna happen right. in Loki. Yep. So. Which I, I remain saying that Loki happens in a different universe. We can call it branched realities and all that stuff. It's a different universe. Yeah, it looks like it's a different universe. That uh, Absolutely, everything involved here, it looks like it's an entirely different universe. Which uh, means it's not in the MCU. Which means it's part of Marvel Studios' productions, but it's not part of the MCU. Well, the Time Variant Authority would still be able to cross over with everything. Also a great way to introduce Kang and Mortis, Nathaniel Richards, all that good stuff, you know? Yes. How does, that ne- <laughs> how does that negate what I just said? Well, because it would still be in the MCU. That that version, that was just a different timeline of the MCU. Still the MCU. No, there's no such thing as timelines. There's yeah, different they're... universes. When they enter the quantum realm and they enter somewhere else, they're not mm-hmm. in their timeline. They're, they're in completely different universes. Because whatever they do when they're in that separate timeline doesn't affect what happens when they return so it's not timelines it's universes yeah it affects them so it it is actually a timeline that's the way that's described in marvel it's the exact same thing that's literally not how it's described in marvel that's that's not what they say they say the opposite go on yeah i'll just be repeating what i just said where's your source on this because the movie when hulk says you can't go to the past yeah. And that becomes your future when he was explaining it to War Machine and uh, Hawkeye. Yes, exactly. Correct. It's oh, not we interpret it differently thing. then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's an alternate timeline. Every time that you go, uh, that you travel outside of your timeline, you're creating a new timeline, whether it's in the past or in the future. You're creating an alternate timeline. So it's a divergent. So, like, here's yours. And then you're creating a divergent, and there's that point of divergence. And every single choice, every single uh-huh. decision that you made, you could have made an, the opposite decision or a different decision. So everything you do creates an infinite number, and everything that everybody else does creates an infinite number of alternate timelines that so do alternate, not affect your main timeline. But, but alternate timelines are not alternate universes. No, not really. They're different timelines. Really. I need so, an so, absolute. Well... Uh, no, they're they're technically not okay. because not in that um, that way of looking at it because you still have like there would still be the quantum uh, dimension and we don't know if the quantum dimension it seems to me like the quantum dimension is quantum actually realm. well yeah. quantum realm it's not really is it a dimension it could technically be considered a dimension but anyway they call however, it realm in the movies mm-hmm. uh, however you're going to look at it though is that it's it's different it seems to be able to connect with all these other timelines. You get it? Like, like that's a singularity. Like, it's it's outside of the realm of time. Well, they're connecting to the time that exists in the main universe that they've been living in. Anyway. Um, so. How likely are people to return to movies? What was the answer to that poll? <laughs> All right. So there is indeed a new poll out there. So the Hollywood Reporter does a morning consult poll, and it says that Americans are very unlikely to return to theaters. How unlikely? Well, um, according to Americans, there are 65% say that they are very unlikely to go to a movie theater immediately after them opening. 56% are unlike are very unlikely to go to a movie theater within two weeks of it opening. 48% are very unlikely within a month of it opening. 37% say that they're unlikely any time in 2000. Now, mind you, that's not that's that's the one thing that's different. As opposed to putting a timeline, they're saying any time in the year 2000 or, or 2020. 
as opposed to what about six months after? What about the last day of, you know, so it's 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 more open like, oh, yeah, maybe. But still at 37 percent, very unlikely. That's a lot. And then they have this other one where it says that they're that Americans from the age group of 18 to 34, 34 percent of that age group are very unlikely to return or, or, or excuse me, are very likely to return if a face mask is required to enter really? and 29% are somewhat likely to join or to, to come in if face masks are required. Okay. Now going to a movie theater, mind you, these are 18 to 34 year olds. So fairly young, um, often don't think too far into the future or logically conclude, you know, a, a statement. So as well as lower risk of being a also of lower risk, but they specifically said if a face mask mandate, yeah. you cannot enter this movie theater without a face mask. Yeah. Before you actually go into your movie, what is, what is one of the things that you typically do? Get popcorn? Yeah. How are you going to eat the popcorn with a face mask? How are you going to drink with a face mask? Well, they're saying to enter. I'm sure they're still going to sell popcorn and drinks because that's the bread and butter. That's Once the only way they down, can make money. It's their popcorn sit, and butter. Yeah, when you're sitting down. yeah, it's like, <laughs> And buttery topping. It's not real butter. <laughs> the light's dim. You're in the dark. Mm-hmm. You unmask. You're good. It's I, Why are we even pretending like that's really going to be enforced in these auditoriums? We're good. Exactly. Exactly. It's not going to be enforced. And I just don't think that a lot of people are really thinking about this. So all of these very likely if face masks are enforced – uh, especially when we know that face masks only protect you 5% from COVID, but they, they protect other people 95%. So if you wear a face mask, that protects you. So the more responsible you are, the less likely you are to infect others, but not to be affected. Uh-huh. So all these other guys who are not going to be as conscious, who are just going to be sitting there going up next to people and, you know, oh, let's have some popcorn. Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> wow, that was dry. <coughs> Get past the drink <laughs> and oh. you know yeah as soon as that happens fights are going to break out dark movie theater this uh, young people high testosterone i'm saying but let's give the cre- the movie theater some credit they're gonna make the seats distance like you're not gonna be able are to they? sit in yeah i didn't read gonna... that yeah on cineplex's website that's the big theater chain in oh, canada okay. yes. i saw them say that you're gonna have to order your tickets online which means pre-signed seatings which also means that yes. when we get there there's probably going to be like caution tape covering a whole freaking column of chairs well you you always do the imax i always do the d box so i get to actually choose my seats for the regular audience who comes in it's not 3d or anything like that i don't think that they actually have they usually try to, the way that's usually done is to capacity do they still have it where you have to choose your seat yeah, the seat selection is something that's done when a movie is new, maybe the first two weeks in. But even for the basic tickets? Yeah, even for the basic tickets because it's a okay, jam-packed I'll, arena. arena. I'll have to, well, I don't know. I'll have to double-check on that because no, I, I thought I'm, it was I'm just – I'm fairly confident that's how it is at damn near every cineplex, not these small theater chains, which are like a dying breed. But at every main big-time movie theater everywhere, it's not just over here, but like the first couple of weeks when there's actually demand for tickets, yeah. But then they won't bother when they know they're only going to get like a 10% full uh, auditorium. They'll just let you just go and sit wherever you need to sit. But I mean, like, they will actually tape off the seats nowadays, like they do on on transit, at least in this city. Yeah, but there's only but so much you can do. Because it's like, if you go in there, what are they going to do? Only have two? What if I want to go in there with three people? You know? Um, Yeah, sometimes there will be like rows of three. Sometimes there will be rows of twos. But there's definitely going to be these seats that are are, uh, crossed off. I don't know. I guess they could Possibly. figure it out. And and if this <laughs> you're putting poll a lot of true, faith in private business. Yeah, but if this poll is true, there's not even going to be that much people in these movie theaters. Like yeah. people are going to want to sit far away from people. That's how it was even before this pandemic. That's I never sat next to strangers. Mm, I had one time. Oh, anyway. <laughs> you sat next to strangers on purpose when there was available seats. Other. No, I went to go see uh, Cars 3 on opening night because it happened to have been my son's birthday. And uh, there were only three families in there, you know, with oh. kids. Mine was one of them. And then this couple, this young guy and young girl, decided to come over and sit right in front of us. So that's the, f- the, uh, the fourth group of people. 
uh, three families in this fourth group, they decided to sit on the seats right in front of us. We got two kids with us, me and my wife. We got two kids, and they just decided to sit there. And the guy turned around twice. I didn't even hear him um, either. Uh, I didn't hear him the first time, but the second time, uh, that's when I heard something. It was right at the end of the movie. It's like, uh, hey, you want to control your effing kids? Wow. And my wife is, you know, she's always trying to avoid a conflict. I run straight head towards it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fist clenched. And uh, yeah, we got into it. And I had this guy cowering. And all I had to do was stand up and, you know, to him. I was mm-hmm. like, what did you just say? And he's oh, oh, oh. Pulls out his camera. I'm like, get the camera out of my face because oh, it's man. still dark. But he puts the camera in my face. And there's the light on it. So right away, it's like, you're not a tough guy. You acted like a tough guy. All I did was stand up and you pull out the camera and you get all freaked out. I'm like, move the camera out of my face. He refused to. So I moved the camera. He didn't drop it. I should have hit him a lot harder. I should have punched his hand, but I move it. Because like, this is me. Like you put a camera with a light in my face in a dark theater. You're trying to blind me so that you could punch me. So that you can attack me. You already, you know, threatened my wife. So what's to say you're not going to try? You know, so, so literally I moved it. He went and he started yelling at, you know, somebody else and whatnot. You know, some some woman who's working there is like, bro, you yelled at my wife. Now you're yelling at her. But I'm standing right here yelling at you. What do you do? You ran away from your woman. You mm-hmm. ran away from your You left your woman here. What's going to happen? Like, you're terrified of me. You left your woman to fight? Come on, you coward. Don't try to act like a tough guy. He went and he demanded that the cops be called and everything oh, like that. So, was that here in Canada? That was That was at the Cineplex right over here in Mississauga. Yeah. I became friends with, uh, I think her name is Karen. It's a funny name, but I, if, if I'm no Barbara, <laughs> yeah. it was Barbara. It was Barbara. Um, she's actually the manager over here. I I'm friends with her now because, cause like he recorded the whole thing and everything. He's just like, this guy was an idiot. And I can't believe that he was using that kind of language where there are kids in the theater like yeah. that. Like this is just unacceptable. It's like, and why did he sit in front of kids to begin with? And he's showing her the video. As if, oh, this will get him. Yeah. So check it out, guys. Like, because just... when people are that stupid, it's like, yeah. I'm the one showing the video. You're showing that that, that you were the aggressor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're showing that you're a coward also. Like the, the, the uh, paladin security came first. They were laughing at him. Like, you sure you want to take this to the police, dude? Like, you started trash with this guy and then you ran away. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, yeah, because he committed assault. Oh, boy. And battery. And, I'm, and he's pointing at me. I was like, brah, I hope you didn't go to law school to learn those terms because that is not how those terms work. And he's just like, yeah. I was like, yeah, chicken. Hey, hey, hey. Careful. I don't want you to go and tell your mommy on me. <laughs> what a little plug. Where was this girl? I humiliated this guy. Where was his woman this whole time? She was right by his side and she was on his side also. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> like, I would have thought like that would be a deal breaker where you just break up, but okay. Well, no, I did say, well, well, either way, uh, like I, I laid into it once the cops came, I was like, it's all good. Like at the end of the day, this guy acts like a tough guy. He can't even protect us. He starts a fight with a guy and then runs away from his girl to leave her to, you know, what, what if I was a psychopath? Like what's going to happen at the end of the day, he, the way that he yells, and I'm saying this so that he could hear it. The way that this guy yells, sounding like a little, he's got a little cantaloupe head and he yells like he's some kind of a freaking tough guy. He's going to, his wife and he are going to get into an argument when he's his girlfriend, whatever. They're going to get into an argument. And you know what's going to happen? She's going to bring up this moment where he had a chance to be a tough guy with a fight that he started and he ran away like a punk. So why is he yelling at her? I was like, yeah, I was was like, she's never going to forget that. And she's going to bring that up every single time. This dude. He's done. That that's a relationship that's never gonna work. There's you know, no so. Lois and Clark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a segue. Okay, yeah. fine. So Let take, me go take into it. Away. it. So check Dean this Kane. out, man. Yeah. So Dean K yeah, like you said, Dean Kane, who played Superman in Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark's uh, uh, Adventures of Superman. Uh, mind you, this was the TV show that was on when they did the death of Superman. So it was because this TV show was on that they kept on saying, we can't get Lois and Clark married because they're not married in the TV show yet. So they got married in the TV show first before they got married in the comic books. So this is a really important show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, And Dean Cain went on Fox News and he's talking to Ainsley Earhart, whatever her name is. Uh, Yeah, Ainsley uh, Earhart. Uh, He says, Superman couldn't talk about truth, justice and the American way today. So I want to open up a discussion, but first I want to point out 
Tom King gets on. And I didn't even see, I saw this when I was looking at one of the articles. Tom King gets on and he posts a picture, a page of, uh, of his, you know, up in the sky thing. Uh, the, 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 you know, his, his comic book that he did for Superman. That was the Walmart exclusives that screwed mm. over the comic book stores. He says, <laughs> mother effer. He used the whole thing. Mother effer. I put it in a comic book this year. Shake my head. I, like I can imagine he just did like a snap, <laughs> you know, like a snap and a wave at the same time. This freaking guy. <laughs> First off, it just says something about the American way. It doesn't say truth, justice in the American way. Like Superman would often say, and he'd said in the movie and stuff. I stand for truth, justice in the American way, Mr. President. Like, you know, that's, that that's something that you know that was actually in the original uh richard donner movie um tom king just says the american way you know saying it's 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 almost vague it's only if you saw that donner film but so so that was just nonsense that's just him deciding to jump on it's like dude how about you start talking all the the detractors you got for your batman comic book all right sit, go, go back and sit in the corner brah all right don't don't try and get on freaking dean kane because he said something i hear he loves dogs also anyway so Dean Cain says this. Now, it's on Fox News. In 2016, he put out that he voted for Trump and that, or, or, or that he, he's a Trump supporter and all that stuff. Um, I'm not against Trump supporters. I'm, I'm, I'm against anybody who's a loyalist, including and possibly especially a Trump lawyer. No, not even especially. Anybody who's a loyalist to a party, I think that you don't think enough. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, I don't care if somebody's upset at me saying that. That's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm more than happy to hear a contrarian point of view, but I don't think that you think enough if you engage in group think. That's just my opinion on it. So for him to go and say something like that, I can honestly say that I kind of sort of agree just a little bit because the idea of truth, justice in the American way, it kind of sounds like make America great again, which on its own isn't really the worst thing in the world to say when Trump says it. And he also says all these other racist things that come out of his mouth. And yes, Donald Trump is a racist and yes, he's probably more of a racist than, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Joe Biden is, but make no mistake. Joe Biden has enforced more policy, which makes him more about systemic racism, which is a bigger deal than just regular racism. It affects more people in many worse ways. Um, when Trump says it and he says the quiet parts out loud, you know what make America uh, great again means for Donald Trump. Okay. But all that being said, I can kind of agree with what Dean Cain has to say about this. It's very hard to say truth, truth, justice in the American way without it sounding cynical. I mean, no. Also, he, sorry, just really quick. Also, he didn't say it in a comic book. He was an actor and he said it on TV, which is a much much larger medium than any comic book I mean, has ever been. So but he was sorry. Superman. He was a comic book character. It, it doesn't. Yeah. But he also said, say, and he said it as a, in a TV show, as opposed to in a comic book. Right. So, um, yeah, today, if someone said truth, justice in an American way, like if it was the first time I ever said, uh, the context matters and seeing Superman say it. Yeah. I, I'd be with it. And I wouldn't think any second thought of it. Uh, I mean, that's good. And I, w- I would hope that everyone else would accept it and not flip out and be like, what do they mean? Superman wants truth, justice, and the American way. What American way? You know, the, the one that's advertised. The American way that means all men are created equal. You know the thing. <laughs> nice, the Joe Biden comment. You, you, you know the thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know the thing. It's called dementia, you freaking oh my God. goofy old man. But nothing's wrong with truth, justice, and the American <laughs> way. So I'd be okay with it, and I'd probably make a YouTube video saying, guys, chill out. I would make a video that's, uh, if I cared enough, you know, I would probably say, you know, guys, chill out also. But I could also say the thing about make America great again, because depending here's the thing what what's being said well when was america great when there was slavery when was this when was that well nothing is you know he said great didn't say perfect america was pretty damn great back nah, during world slavery war slavery is too. not i wouldn't call it great when was it great though Seriously, real talk when was it great then okay we great. didn't say perfect but great yeah okay good great i would say around the 19 around world war ii to the 1950s or so world war ii when, yeah what like Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Well, understand we were at war. 
There, there's a lot to go behind there. We could get into it. I'm, I'm happy to talk about the world war, both world wars, if you want. Um, but yes, I, while I don't think that it was necessarily the most necessary thing in the world, we were at war. We right. did get surprise attacks. Ooh. There was this big deal. They refused. All to I'm going to say, sorry, all go I'm going to say, cause we're like an hour and nine minutes in and we're not going to make this. We'll call than... this bonus features. Do you want to do that? Like a separate yeah. video type thing? Well, no, no, no. Just, Added to the uh, look. Here's the regular thing, but now we're getting outside of comic books a little bit. Uh, I so won't even um, be that, I won't even be that long. But okay, um, if you believe like I believe that the Americans had intel that Japan was going to attack and they let it happen just so they could retaliate. Mm. If you believe that, there's then... no proof that that happened. Okay. I know the the stuff you're talking about. There was absolutely no proof. Okay, that that was the case though. That's all that I'm, I was going to say then. So no need <laughs> for bonus you. features. No need for bonus well, features. Whatever. But I yeah, hear it was you. Great, but it was great yeah. post World War II. Yeah. Well. Well. It was great as far as Americans were taken care of. Now black people weren't taken care of. There was redlining. You know what I'm saying? So black people and for and brown people. Uh, if you're a homeowner, you didn't get to take advantage of the really low cost loans, the low interest loans, the low yield loans that you know made it so that Americans could actually have equity you mm-hmm. know in the form of home ownership of a large home you know the the two cars white picket fence um who was it was it hoover i forget who it was anyway uh, two chickens in uh, a chicken in every pot and two cars in every garage you know the idea that we're good you know saying we're good americans are going to be taken care of jobs weren't sent overseas all the time and you know bankers weren't out of control bankers were actually you know the gilded age thing was ended and they were like you bankers screwed things up you're going to pay for that now, and uh, we're going to start doing the New Deal, you know, and just boom, and people were taken care of. And they wanted to do more. They wanted to make healthcare universal. Uh, these are the kind of things that uh, they want to do. And this was a time when America was great. It could have been better. They could have included uh, black and brown people, minorities. They, they could have, you know, made reparations at the time for slaves who were still alive when they were slaves, wow. you know, at, at the time. You know, so there's a lot that they could have done. Yeah, so, but so they great didn't. is a stretch. Well, it's a, again, um, America was extremely prosperous. There was a lot of good stuff going on. There, there was a time of unilateral peace for a long time afterwards. Again, there, there was more good than bad for the country as a whole and for the majority of the people that were there at the time. Right. But like I said... Uh, it was not good at all. Well, not at all, but almost at all for black and brown people, for for uh, minorities that include, you know, Asians, uh, everybody. It, w- it was a really bad time. Uh, the Asians got uh, some form of reparation for being in the internment camps for right. four years, you know, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. So the longer and longer you talk, the more it sounds like make white America great again. <sighs> There was, like I said, I just said there were reparations for the uh, for for the Japanese and things like that. They never they never took care of the Chinese, unfortunately, which um, the the people who built our railroads and so much else. No, there was, like I said, great. It made the nation great. It made America the world leader. It was the superpower. You know what I'm saying? Like there was peace because everybody was like, let's not piss off America. Look at what they can do. You know what I'm saying? Like there was world peace for the most part so yeah i i don't think that great is that far of a stretch a little bit of a stretch yes i can see it so i'm looking again? at it as a hold make america good again gooder again yeah really good again yeah sure Fair. you know whatever it is whatever you want to say great you know, whatever it is i don't uh-huh. care uh like i said it wasn't perfect in fact it was nowhere near perfect there were many multitudes plethora of problems but you know Good is still good. Great is still great. And obviously, you're going to want to prop it up and be like, it was good. Let's call it great. Oh, we can go with great. We can, mm-hmm. we can, we can, we can go with great. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah. So, so that's the podcast, ladies and gents. <laughs> Just ending it like that. Jeez. Huh? Anyway, yeah. Be we sure both... to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Chillmonger. Be sure to. I mean, you're already subscribed to Professor Bill. Why wouldn't you be? But if you're not, it's called Comic Book University. Why Rhyme. wouldn't you be subscribed to Chillmonger either? Uh, Why wouldn't you be subscribed? There. How are you going to listen to me for 22 weeks? 23 weeks, actually. Episode 23. 23. This is episode 23. The Jordan episode. Jordan. <laughs> Every time the kids would jump when I was younger. Jordan. <laughs> they said Jordan? Really? 
Yeah, we used to, every time we used to try, even if it was just a jump shot, forget about yeah. a, a dunk. Who could dunk when you were a teenager or junior high in, in, in you know, school, right? No, but every like time we used Kobe, to jump. Kobe Jordan, comes off the tongue a little bit better than Jordan or MJ or Mike. No, Kobe didn't have his own shoe, bro. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so we will wrap that up. If you guys want to hear more about the history of World War II, by all means, hey, we can talk about World War One also. Let's do it. The Korean War, let's do it, man. Those are my three, like, you know, fortes. But anyway, we're out for now. We're out. All right, so I'll talk to you guys later. Professor Bill and Chillmonger, Comic Book University. Class, class dismissed. dismissed.